should try Bridge because Bridge is a great game. Uh, I mean, Bridge is just, it's a fantastic game. And it, one of the best things about the game is that it has something to offer everyone. And you can play it at a very basic level and have a great time, or you can pursue it uh, for the rest of your life and still always have more to learn. And for me, that's one of the great things about it is it isn't ever rote. It isn't ever, okay, I do X, I do Y, I do Z, and then, you know, I get this result every time. It's not like that. It's rich and it's layered and it's full of brand new puzzles every time. You know, when you pick up a bridge hand, this hand probably hasn't been seen before. I think there will be similarities between it and other hands, but there are so many different possible combinations that it's very rarely the same experience over and over and over again. And I think that's really great about it. I think that if you like to be challenged and you like games where there is a challenge, having a game where you can't just apply the same strategy every single time is fantastic. But you also don't need to be challenged in that way. You can just play it socially. You can just, this is something that we're going to do over tea or we're going to do, you know, before the movie and just have fun with it. And it doesn't have to be something that you work hard at and you excel at and you, you're skilled at. It's just like, hey, we're just going to sit down for 20 minutes and play. Let's have some fun. It's like anything else in life. To figure out what you're going to enjoy, you have to try it. And I think with Bridge, I would start socially. I would start on my own or with a group of people uh, playing in a relaxed atmosphere and see if you like it. Bridge is not for everyone. And it is, I think, has something to offer everyone, but not everybody is going to enjoy it. And I think that you want to find yourself in a comfortable atmosphere and see if you like it. And then if you like it, you can add layers. You can try competition. You can go to the club. You can play online. You can do a lot of different things to see where your niche is, what you enjoy. And one of the things about Bridge is it's very easy to challenge yourself. It's a very challenging game. And so if you're uncomfortable in a tournament scenario, that's a great way to push yourself for growth emotionally and intellectually. And, and can you find a mental game where you're not intimidated by the people that you sit down with? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things about bridge that have nothing to do with cards. You know, it, it is a, a strong mental component. How do you deal with competition? How do you deal with making mistakes? And, and for me, those are things that I love working at, excelling on, in addition to all the challenges and puzzles that are presented by the cards themselves. I would say you have to try it. <laughs> you, you have to try Bridge because it is a really great game and it has a lot to offer. And the only way to really know if it's something that's going to work for you is to play it. And if you can sit down and learn the mechanics in 15, 20 minutes and then play, you know, 10 hands, I think you'll have a good sense of if it's something you enjoy or not. Another really great thing about Bridge is you can play it as long as you want. If you go to the Bridge Club, it's usually about three and a half hours. And a tournament session is also usually about three and a half hours. And what it is, is it's a set amount of hands. So you might play 24 hands, or you might play 27 hands, or somewhere in between. And however long that takes, it takes. And generally speaking, it's about three and a half hours. But it varies depending on the format and uh, the style of the club or the tournament. But if you're not playing in a setting like that, if it's just you and your friends have gotten together and it's something to do before dinner or before a movie or, you know, with tea, if you're in that kind of scenario, it is however long you want. You know, you can sit down and say, okay, we have five minutes, let's play one hand. Or, you know, we have 20 minutes, let's play four hands. Um, you probably need a little bit more time to play four hands, maybe 25 minutes. But... You know, it depends on how much time you're taking with the hands. So it also depends on how long you want to play. You can play for two hours, or four hours, or eight hours, depending on what you and your friends want to do. If it is in a social setting and it's, it's something that you're just doing for fun and not a competitive sanctioned setting, then it's entirely up to you. It could be five minutes or it could be ten hours. I would say that's about right. I think at the club they give you about six or seven minutes and everybody's very different in how fast they play. Some people play very slowly naturally and some people play very fast naturally. But I would say probably at Social Bridge I would allot about 10 minutes per hand. 
Bridge is one of those things where the more you do it, the easier it is. And so if you have card experience, it can be easier for you to get into the game. You know, if you've played spades or you've played hearts, so you've played a trick-taking game, then it's going to be a little bit easier for you to get into bridge. But you don't need that experience. You don't have to have ever picked up a deck of cards. I have students who never played cards before they played bridge, and they're doing great. It's just about repetition, doing it over and over and over again. And you can do that and have fun. So you just have to get into it and, again, not worry about whether it's right or wrong and just play. And if you're playing, you're having fun. Think of it as a puzzle to solve. No, you don't have to know any math. It helps to be able to add to 13. Uh, if you can add to 13, you're probably in pretty good shape. The skills that you have while working with numbers uh, can be useful in bridge, but you don't need them. And I think that's why there's this idea that people who are really good with numbers and who are really good with math are very good at bridge. I think because the skill set translates. But you don't need to be good with numbers and you don't need those skills to be good at bridge. You really have to just be able to remember the cards that were played. And a part of that is adding up to 13. But once you reach a place where you're patterning the hand, you don't even need to do that. It really is not a mathematical game. It's a memory game, it's a puzzle game, and it's a communication uh, with your partner game. It, it really is no math involved. The skills you need to be a good bridge player are, uh, first and foremost, the ability to work with a partner. Bridge is a partnership game, and your partner sitting across from the table from you and you have to be able to work for them. The only time that you don't have to work with your partner is if you're declaring the hand or your dummy. But during the auction, it's very important to be able to have a cooperative conversation with your partner so that the two of you can determine what the best place to be is. Um, and if you're not good at working with your partner, if you are too giving or you're too taking or you're too controlling or you're not controlling enough, and you're not good at this harmony of let's just have a conversation about this and together make the right decision, it can be very challenging. Uh, when you're defending, it's actually much more difficult, but it's even more important to be working with your partner uh, because you know, you're trying to achieve the same goal and you have to work together to do that. If you're working separately, you're actually working against each other and it can be very counterproductive. So I really feel that the ability to work with a partner is the most important skill. Language skills can be useful because the auction is a language. And so if you're good at learning languages, that part of bridge is gonna be a lot easier for you. There's also a bit of rote memorization in the auction that in the language that there isn't in the play. One of the other skills that you need to be a good bridge player is the ability to remember things. And that's one of the great things about bridge is it can help you build the skill. You don't have to start with it. You can use bridge to help you get better at remembering things um, and finding techniques and tools that work for you to remember things. But there's a lot of memory work in bridge. You have to remember what was said on the auction during the play and you have to remember what cards were played. Other than that, logic skills and puzzle solving skills are very helpful and those are also skills that you can build while playing the game. I think if you can hold the cards, you can learn. <laughs> I, I, I feel that um, five-year-olds are perfectly capable of playing the game. And, and again, I feel that when people try and teach the game, they make it way too complex. I mean, at its heart, it's a game of war. So if your child can play war, they can play bridge. You just need very basic communication skills. You need to understand that a diamond is a diamond and a that the five is higher than the four. And if you can understand those concepts, you know, shape recognition, a heart is a heart, and you can understand that this card, the 10, is higher than this card, the eight, then you can play bridge. I've taught some very young kids and they've done really well. And the key to teaching young kids is just keeping it as simple as possible, making the play essentially a giant game of war and making the bidding just a very simple conversation. If you have hearts, you bid hearts because you have hearts. And I think kids are perfectly capable of that at a very young age. Well, I don't think there's a maximum. <laughs> I, I mean, 
you know, you don't have to be smart or good at math or young to play bridge. And that is one of the great things about the game is that you can do it at any age. It has very little physical requirements. You probably need to be able to see, although there are accommodations who are made for people who have visual problems. You just have to be able to follow the basic fundamental rules of the game following suit. And if you can do that, you can play bridge. I think the oldest person I ever taught was 90. People like to say that the, brid the brain isn't as elastic and you don't learn as fast. And and maybe that's true. I It isn't my experience. I think that, um, you know, people learn at different rates based on their life experiences. If you've practiced a skill that translates to bridge, you're going to pick it up faster. And if you've never practiced the skill, you're going to pick it up slower. I don't think it's a question of being smart or young or good at math. It's just, you know, it requires practice. Bridge requires practice to be good at. So if you have practice at something that works also in bridge, you're going to have that natural leg up. But as an, you know, a 90 year old, you certainly are more than capable of learning bridge. There's, there's no reason you can't and you should because it is very good for your brain and it's good socially. It gives you something to do with your friends and it's fun and challenging. Mm -hmm.